Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 6th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. The Hawkwatch was not held today due to poor weather, but I did get out birding to a few spots, so I'd like to show some of the photo highlights from that. And then I'd like to give a bit of a preview for what you can expect over the next few weeks and next few months as we get into the season. I know there's a lot of people who may be new, so I'd like to give you an idea of the timing of the numbers and the different species. Kim and I started out the morning by going to the Salmon Creek Overlook, which you reach by walking down this path that leads from the Owl Woods parking lot. By looking under the bridge up Salmon Creek, we saw a raft of around 150 ring-necked ducks. And we also found a nesting rock pigeon whose ominous coos were echoing under the bridge. Afterwards, we headed into the Owl Woods to get a bit of a walk in and maybe find an owl. We found this snag of an ash tree that shows signs of emerald ash borer. And here's the holes they make in the bark. So they make these sort of semicircles. They're usually round on one side and flat on the other. So they're shaped kind of like a capital D. We didn't find any owls and it wasn't very birdy other than some black capped chickadees. But on the way out, we found a bunch of these snails all over the ground. These are sepia nemoralis the brown-lipped snail. So if you look here, you see that brown lip to the shell. And this is a non-native snail that was introduced from Europe. Next, we headed over to Braddock Bay Park, but as you can see, the conditions were misty with a light northeasterly wind with rain moving in. So not a good day for raptor migration, and I didn't expect to see anything, so I did not conduct the hawk watch today, but we did do some birding. We found a flock of five purple finches feeding on some berries and a tree behind the small Hawkwatch parking lot. And here we have a male with that nice raspberry color. We went out onto the boardwalk to scan the bay. And we were surprised to see this mink swimming through the water. We went for a walk around the park and I got my first white-breasted nuthatch of the season. And the usual flock of Canada geese were standing guard on the grass. And this American robin was singing from the top of a tree. I picked up two new species for the season today, which were the white-breasted nuthatch and a dark-eyed junco, which brings my Monroe County year list up to 84 species. Again, the count was not conducted today, so the March total remains 213 and the season total remains 371. And stay tuned because we're going to take a look at what we can expect over the next few weeks and months. Very briefly, let's take a look at the forecast for the upcoming days. For both tomorrow and Friday, we're looking at moderate to strong northeasterly winds. So it's not a good wind direction for migration, and I would not expect much migration. Although we might get a little bit of sunshine, so maybe we'll get some local raptor activity and overall bird activity. So I plan to be out, but wouldn't expect much raptor migration. And for Saturday, it's looking warmer with a nice southerly wind. Although the high is really only in the low 50s, so not that much warmer. And the concern would be that there's rain moving in. So we'll keep an eye on Saturday, but the rain may prevent a raptor flight that day as well. Okay, let's do a brief recap of what has happened so far this season with the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. So the count was conducted by volunteers for four days in February. You can see totals were 35, 27, 48, 46. And then I also put in a partial count from when I arrived at the park on the 29th and had the golden eagle and a bald eagle. So a total of 158 migrating raptors for February is a very high number. It seemed like an early spring this year with uh, several days with good southerly winds in February. And stuff has definitely been on the early end. Taking a look at the first six days of March, we started out with an okay day with 27 migrants, but we've also had a lot of days with 0, 1, 0, 10, but we did have yesterday with 175. So when we're getting good winds, we're starting to get pretty big flights. If we compare that to March of last year, we see that for the first half of March 2023, the highest daily total was only 42. And you can see that the numbers were mostly from turkey vulture numbers picking up. Everything else was low, you know, a couple of bald eagles here and there, a couple of red tails, but really slow for the first half of March. And then as we got into the second half of March, we see that finally on March 16th, we had a day with 206 migrants. And that was mostly from turkey vulture numbers starting to pick up. But you can see also bald eagles, 18 bald eagles, 22, 48. 
and red shoulders and red tails as well, you know, getting a couple dozen of them in a day. So once we hit mid-March, then we really start to get consistently decent days. We're no longer getting days with zero or one migrants unless it's a complete rain out. We're getting uh, moderate numbers. You can see, um, you know, the good days we were getting several hundred and even on the poor days we were still getting 50. And then towards the end of March, we really start to see the numbers get into the thousands as we hit the peak of the turkey vulture migration. You can see March 26th, almost 2,000 turkey vultures. And then March 29th was the biggest day of the month with 3,800 turkey vultures and 126 red tails, around 4,100 total migrants that day. And then as we get into April, you see the turkey vultures stay really high and we start to get a really good variety of species overall. We're starting to get ospreys. We start to get the broad wings. Last year we had the first ones, April 11th. So their numbers are starting to pick up and we just have pretty much every species that we get throughout the season. We're seeing them in this April time period. And then as we get into around the third week of April, here you can see April 21st, we had 3,800 broad wings, but days with 10,000, 15,000 are even possible some years. So once you get into that last week of April time frame, and then into May, we're looking at really big numbers of broad wings coming through, and we still get really good turkey vulture flights. It's past peak by that point, but we're still getting hundreds of turkey vultures in a day. And as we get into the first half of May, again, we're still getting good numbers of turkey vultures and really good numbers of almost everything. We're getting big pushes of broadwing hawks where we can get thousands of them in a day. And looking at the overall totals, on the good days, we're getting thousands of birds. Most days, we're getting hundreds. And even on the low days, we're getting 27 or 78. And then as we get into the second half of May, the hawk migration is starting to wind down. We're just not getting as much variety. You can see the falcon numbers are starting to get pretty low. Exhibitor numbers are getting low, but we can still get decent flights of turkey vultures and bald eagles and broad wings. But also keep in mind that even though the hawk watch is starting to wind down, the second half of May can be a great time to be out birding. Some of the best songbird diversity, getting out every day at sunrise to either do warblers or shorebirds or whatever, just getting out to hot spots. So very long days at the end of May and the hawk watch almost becomes a little bit of an afterthought that's overshadowed by all the other amazing birding up here on the south shore of Lake Ontario. All right, I hope that gives you an idea of what to expect over the next few months. I know there may be some new people watching this video because I will be jumping on the Zoom call tonight for the Braddock Bay Raptor Research Raptor ID class. So if you're here from that class, welcome, and I hope that you're able to make it out to the Hawk Watch. I know you guys have some field trips scheduled. But the main summary to come away with is the Hawk Watch is a little bit slow to get started here in March. Now, we've had some good days so far, but I uh, don't feel like you've missed anything big so far. And with the weather being rainy today and unfavorable winds the next few days, we'll expect really low numbers, but give it another week or two and then things will really start to pick up and get fun out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to Lyco Birds to make sure you don't miss any of these daily updates. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.